Hello everyone, so good to see you. I have played Persona 3 Reload. A demo, mind you, but I have played it. That is not something I was expecting to say this soon. We're still about half a year away from the official release, but Atlas put together a demo during PAX West 2023. So you know I had to go over there during media hours first thing because those lines got long. You can see some early impressions of both Persona 3 Reload and Persona 5 Tactica from the show floor already, but I knew I had to talk a bit more in depth with P3R, with some proper audio quality this time. But yes, once the show floor opened, I got to the booth to meet up with the remake to one of my favorite games. We speed dated, and I said, you know, I feel like we should do this again sometime, so I went right back inside. That is because there are two different paths to take in the demo, called New Moon and Full Moon. Both are about 15 minutes long, and to get right to it, this game is looking so gorgeous. Persona 5, mind you, was first made for the PS3 and has kept a fairly consistent art style since then, but Persona 3 Reload really does feel like a leap and evolution for the series. The look and style of Persona has taken what it's learned with 4 and 5 and blended it together with the more somber tone of 3 to create something that still retains its identity. And I think that's a lot more important to make note of than some may think. Persona 5 was very loud and expressive, the tone is chaotic, and very intentionally so, with so much of the art and UI being uneven with wildly contrasting colors between the reds and whites and blacks. But the overall theme of Persona 3 in general is much more subtle than that. It hovers around the themes of death. One of the more recent trailers opened with a little monologue alluding to this front and center. It's not as wildly expressive as Persona 5, and well, that's because it's not supposed to be. It respects how the theme is quieter and more intimate in tone, and just overall feels like the mood of Persona 3. That became the most apparent to me from the pause menu of all things. This was a 15 minute demo, and I think I spent two of them just looking around and browsing through as many menu options as possible to get a feel for the UI. The application of minimalism is capitalized on so well here, with the art team really showing their creative range. Each menu option has Makoto transitioning from a new and unique pose as he splashes onto the screen, and like, they can all honestly be your new desktop wallpaper. They're just all so good. So art direction, nice, great, awesome, everything is looking pretty in a Persona game, what a surprise. But you want to hear about the gameplay itself, yeah? We've seen little snippets of Tartarus in the trailers, and I think that's most veterans' main concern. Is it the same as before? Tartarus is where the core of combat and exploration happens, after all. For those who don't know the original games, you must ascend many, many floors up what feels like an endless montage of halls and randomly generated layouts. Well, the overall format of this structure is likely going to be the same given this screenshot of us going beyond the 100th floor, but there have been significant changes to the layout this time around. I took the new moon path of the demo first, which is the exploration of Thebel, the first floors of Tartarus. The best way I can describe it is, in the original, it felt like you were watching lab rats run around a maze trying to find the cheese at the end of the path. Rinse and repeat over and over again. This time, you feel as though you're actually inside a structure and exploring it. I think it's all a matter of perspective, really. It forces you to have that over-the-shoulder view and has you facing forward most of the time. Before, you could kind of see the layout in neighboring paths, which lends to that lab maze feel. It doesn't help that every room used to look like every other room. I also tried to split my party up so they can explore the floors individually, but that doesn't appear to be a thing anymore. It was part of the tutorial in the original game, and you know, that might be for the best. Splitting up and having your party fight alone caused some weird and uneven accumulations of experience, so the absence of this feels like it's going to work out for the better. As I explored this new Tartarus, I discovered rooms could become much more varied. Whether it's elevation, big open rooms, a change in the intense green lighting, there is a lot more variety here. On one hand, you can see where the rooms can repeat and that the randomly generated portion still exists, but it's constructed in a way that makes some of them feel more deliberately unique. It's hard to describe, and maybe it's just because I saw only about 10 floors or so, but all in all, it looked, to my eyes, fresh and more visually interesting to look at. As I learned with Pikmin 4 of all things, putting the camera behind the character for a more level perspective helps a lot more with immersion than you might think. That angle helps a lot because once you get used to the layouts, you'll likely be using the new dash all over the place, which is a welcome addition to heavy dungeon exploration. You can either go around and collect items from breakable structures, something that also wasn't in the original, or make a mad dash to the next floor. Doing so, however, will make these shadows notice you more easily, and you might get caught off guard in combat. There honestly isn't too much to talk about in terms of combat, it's all mostly the same turn-based gameplay when you break it down. 
but it is easy and a lot quicker to select your options since they no longer exist on a scrolling wheel and are just assigned to a push of a button. I noticed that most of the changes come visually. There's that awesome transition when you get a first strike, you see a silhouette of your character when you're selecting a persona skill, and the cut in for summoning them goes way harder than it has any right to. All all attacks also get their own cool little scene, and each individual character has their own screen when wrapping up a battle with one. They aren't as colorful or elaborate as in Persona 5, but again, they don't necessarily have to be. A little sad that we didn't battle in the new gear as seen in the trailers, but that's just going to come later in the story. At the end of battle, you might also come across Shuffle Time, which allows you to pick a bonus or a new Persona to add to your team. But now, instead of a silly minigame to play, you just pick the card you want instead. Which, good! I don't want to play the minigame anymore, I just don't. And from what I've seen and heard, this system has been overhauled. If you pick a persona that you already have, for example, then every persona in that arcana will gain bonus experience. So if you chose Apsaris while she's already with you, everyone you have of the Priestess arcana will benefit from experience instead of just disappearing and making that shovel time useless. The minor arcana cards seem to have added benefits now. The sword will give you a weapon or a skill card for you to use on your personas. The cup, which usually heals HP, might instead give you a defense boost for the next battle. If there was an added benefit for the wand, which boosts experience, or the coin, which gives you more money, then I didn't encounter those. I can imagine the coin giving you some kind of treasure instead. There's also this Arcana Burst, which I didn't see enough of Shovel Time to see what it does, so that's going to remain a mystery for now. It doesn't seem like characters get fatigued anymore after everything that I played and saw, which thank goodness for that removal as well. It just impeded progress and was a restriction that just got in the way of my schedule when Makoto himself would need to skip activities just to get his health back to normal. I also noticed the addition of light and dark attack magic in this game. Before, Persona 3 only had the potential instant kill light spell Hama and dark spell Mudo, but now they properly introduced what I'm guessing they're going to update and call the bless and curse skills like Koha and Eha, respectively. That is going to change up combat a bit now, so it's exciting to see. Persona 5 introduced Psychokinesis and Nuclear skills, but I didn't see those available on the list of attributes on Personas, so they're likely going to just keep it true to the original. One of the most important features added, aside from, you know, controlling your party members, is that the baton passes back. When you hit an enemy weakness, you can act again or give your turn by shifting, as is now called, to another party member. I love that each character has a mini transitional scene for shifting. Everyone's personality is really showing in this game. Speaking of, there were a lot of opportunities to listen to the new voice acting as well. There was a lot of banter while walking around the first floors that I had never heard before, so it's awesome to note that the script is going to have some original dialogue and isn't just revised from the PS2 original. Junpei is definitely a standout. I think his dynamic with Yukari is explored better and more often in this remake. Yukari, as I recall, is certainly more whiny in the early game, and this iteration leans into that well, so I'm going to need more time to see how that direction evolves over the course of the story. And Mitsuru, like, what? Sometimes it felt like I was listening to the original game. It's astounding how one-to-one -one she sounds, and not in a bad way either. You can really tell how the voice acting is trying to stay faithful to the original voice while respectfully putting their own interpretations on the characters. I think they're hitting a wonderful balance from what I've heard so far. I came out thinking to myself, yeah, I can go an entire game listening to these new voices. Which leads me to the other half of the demo. The first was pretty straightforward, exploring Tartarus, reaching the mid-boss which wasn't too hard, and going up as many floors as Mitsuru would let me while fighting shadows. The full moon portion instead drops you into the beginning of the train sequence of the first major boss, as the name suggests. It is a lot more story focused, and it was really hard for me to skip some of the dialogue because I wanted to reach the end before the demo timed out. It's pretty much the same sequence that you remember, but with the new voice direction. You're led to a couple of scripted battles with some more options to switch personas to, if needed. Not to brag or anything, but there were some instances where in the corner of my eye, I could see this one guy managing the booth watching me switch personas and hitting the shadow's weakness, and he'd be nodding to himself like, yeah, he knows what he's doing. Yep, uh, what can I say? I shot myself in the head enough times back in the day. But really, it's more satisfying than ever to hit those enemy weaknesses. Shift to someone else who can inflict a weakness, which the game will inform you of now, by the way, and initiate an all-out attack. I'm hoping that people will find this loop with all of the accompanying quality of life changes as addictive as I found it. The boss of the first full moon on the train itself, oh boy. First of all, it is incredible to see actual motion capture and animation happening when confronting the boss. Before, your characters would just stand in front of the enemy with their one battle ready pose and chat before entering a fight. But like, now? 
Through his full-on motion capture, you see the hesitation of Junpei before pulling the trigger with the evoker to his head, the way Makoto pulls him back before he gets hit, there's just so much emotion in these cutscenes. It makes for a much more dynamic experience, and based on the trailers, we're going to get a lot of these. I am very curious to see how the more pivotal moments of the game get translated going forward. It's one of those aspects that make you really open your eyes and say, oh, this is really a full-on remake, isn't it? And the boss itself has a little change to it. If you don't want that aspect to be spoiled, then go to this time. It's a small change, but I thought it was interesting enough to bring up, as it implied that other bosses are going to have more gameplay changes to them as well. Okay, so... Once the train picks up speed in the original, you're given an 8 minute time limit that spills both into battles, running on the train, and the boss fight. From what I remember in the demo though, that timer doesn't show up until you reach the boss itself, and you're given like, almost half an hour to beat the boss. Then I was like, huh, okay, so they're making it a bit easier for people who might be making this their first Persona game, right? So I'm fighting it as usual, fending off the reinforcements, and when your health reaches a threshold, the train sped up, making the time limit dip to about half of what I had. This happened a second time, and when it did, I had about 4 minutes left to beat the boss with their backups coming in left and right. Keep in mind, I am also racing the demo time limit as well as the in-game clock, so it's suddenly doubly stressful now. But that made me very curious to see what other changes in these fights we're going to see as we come across them. It's just exciting to think about. I can happily say that while I didn't have any party members fall in battle, the difficulty is still there. This is still early game, but there were some situations where I thought we might get wiped out if the enemy AI decided to gang up on one teammate. Following the boss fight, I was treated to more of Akihiko and Ikutsuki's voices before the demo ended. I can see people not jiving with Akihiko's new tone of voice, but come on, there's not really anyone who can match the unique tones that Liam O'Brien could achieve in that role. They're new interpretations, and fans of the original will just have to be open to that. I highly doubt any of them were ever going to see this, but I think you all are killing it, and your passions for your roles show, even in just this tiny portion that I've experienced so far. Overall, this is looking and sounding so solid, you guys. Music is another highlight. Like with Persona 4 Golden and Persona 5 Royal, there are multiple battle themes, one for a surprise encounter that they call Seize Advantage, and the other is the normal battle theme, which does indeed remix Mass Destruction. Yumi Kawamura has been the female vocalist since the original, and only has ever been switched out for songs exclusive to the female route of Persona 3 Portable, but does not reprise her role here. There's really only a small difference in enunciation from what I could hear. It's still very solid music leaning into the hip-hop of the original. The only place I couldn't tell if there was much of a remix was the first floors of Tartarus, but that makes sense as the music will add layers the higher that you climb. There's a tiny bit of a difference, but I imagine it will sound much more distinctively remixed the higher that we go. I wish I could go higher or explore a little more of the features that you normally could see at this point, but it ends there for now. There are no high school or social aspects, which makes sense because that doesn't really seem like something that would demo as well. Every time I see something more, the sting of not having Kotoni playable hurts a little less. Just a little. Yeah. But it's still exciting, and pretty much everyone I talked to at PAX said that they were loving what they had tried. This demo was also available to those that attended Gamescom, and will undoubtedly be available to play at more shows leading up to release. So yeah, my speed dating ended in success, and I would indeed ask for another date. It just ended too short, you know? I got a feel for what they're like, and it's really promising, so I hope we can see each other again real soon. But what do you think so far? Are you a little more hyped to play the full release? Did you happen to play the demo of the game as well? Let us know down below as you... <sighs> you, you know... Comment, subscribe, dollar on Patreon for access to Discord. Why, why, why do I say this every time? You probably already clicked off the video. Show's over. Pax West is over. Go home. But if you're still there, this little summary was recently released, which warned me about some of the more scandalous things I might encounter while playing the game. Things like getting shot in the head, realistic but not excessively graphic violence, sexual themes, revealing buttocks, abdomen, and cleavage in battle, oh god, bikini armor is back and in HD confirmed. Certain monsters have phallic-like features, gee, I wonder which one that is. In case you were concerned, the game's dialogue contains infrequent use of the expletive Now that's interesting, the original Persona 3 never gave a single both verbally and narratively, but it's a bit more common now, so we're in for seeing Persona give up more this time around because all of these here these are old news every persona has their and but not this time watch out everyone this time we're all gonna get oops sorry i skipped this half of the paragraph uh let's see uh when the player sufficiently builds up the male protagonist bonds with certain female characters 
if you know what I'm saying. It can culminate in optional depictions of characters hugging and kissing? What? Oh my god, hide your kids everyone, we got hugging, we got kissing, I can't believe this, these kids are in high school, I gotta go, I gotta leave, till we meet again everyone, I'm out!